So what we have here is a myocardial infarction, a heart attack. What we have is a blockage in a coronary artery. Remember, coronary arteries are your heart's own blood supply. So when you block these essential coronary arteries, what happens is that these, this, everything downstream of the blockage, it ends up dying as a result. Why? Because blood carries oxygen, nutrients. It also gets rid of waste products. So what happens is that your heart repairs itself, but it ends up repairing it with what we call fibrosis. And fibrosis, how, what happens is that you start to replace tissues or you actually deposit a lot of collagen onto that tissue. Thing is that collagen is it's very strong, but it's neither actin nor is it myosin, so it actually doesn't contract. So it actually impairs the overall contractility and ability of the heart to change its shape and pump blood. So what happens is that you have a loss of pressure because again, you have the ventricles now intact, but with that collagen there, it's going to not allow it to change shape and pump blood as efficiently. So it results in overall decreased blood flow because again, if it's not, uh, the heart isn't contracting as well, it's not going to be able to change its pressure as much, and therefore you won't have as much blood pumping to the rest of the body. So is a common misconception, heart attack and stroke. They are not the same thing. They have similar pathophysiology, but they're not the same. So a heart attack is related, but it's not equal to a stroke. So sometimes a stroke is very informally called a brain attack. Why? So heart attack, myocardial infarction, affects the myocardium in the heart, but a stroke, also known as cerebrovascular accident, I think that term is a little more popular in the United Kingdom. But yeah, so CVA is also another term for a stroke. But there are many things in common. So things like ischemia. So what you're doing is in both heart attacks and strokes, you have a loss of blood supply to a tissue. But in this case, it's a different type of tissue, right, with the stroke. So you have a lack of oxygen and nutrients. And this is the, what we see in the majority of stroke cases. Ischemia due to a lack of blood, frame, or blood flow to a part of the brain. So what half can cause that? Well, block the arteries, just like we had the coronary occlusion in a myocardial infarction. If you block the arteries that supply the brain with blood, you can then develop a stroke. So again, myocardial infarctions, they involve the heart. Strokes or cerebrovascular accidents, they involve the brain. So you have occlusion, again, blocking of some coronary, or not, I shouldn't say coronaries, blocking of some artery that delivers oxygen and nutrients. And then you also have ischemia, so why? Because of the blockage. And then cell death, because again, now these tissues no longer have the oxygen and nutrients they have. They need to stay alive. Okay, so let's go to Top Hat real quick and open it. And I'm going to show you a video. And this isn't from the US, but it's very interesting. When stroke strikes, act fast. Very interesting, right? So let's go back to our top hat question. So I'm going to start the question. What happened to the woman? Multiple things happen, but what happens specifically? And you can select multiple or answers. All right, let's see, at the, see the results and the responses. These are the responses we saw collected and let's open this a bit more yeah so what we saw is that actually her left or actually her right side of the brain was affected so you notice that it was affecting this side of her brain but you notice that she dropped the cup from her left side and her face started drooping from the left, si left side and let's see so you can see the let's forward this a bit oh yeah so right side of the brain but notice her left side is drooping so you have muscles in your face, right? And you also have muscles in your arm. So you notice that it's affecting the right side, but the left side of the body was being affected. And if you were here last semester, so there's something called decussation. And decussation is what a crossing over from one side of the brain to the muscles on the other side of the brain. So this is why you typically see when someone has a stroke in one side of the brain, it affects the opposite side of the body in terms of its muscular control. Okay, so then you have that face drooping again. Why? If you have ischemia to these muscles, or actually ischemia to the brain, and this, these, those part of the brains that are experiencing ischemia control muscles on the opposite side, 
that's going to affect how you're able to maintain the muscular tone and the, the, the contractions in your face. And also asymmetry and arm weakness. Again, if this stroke is happening on one side, side of, the, of, a, of the vessels that supply the brain, it's only going to affect that part of the brain. It's not going to cross over to the other side. So this is why we see that asymmetry. Slurred speech, again, they can talk, but if you all of a sudden have paralysis in part of your facial muscles or the muscles of your tongue that help to produce sounds, that's also going to affect the speech. And again, this all involves seeing, walking, understanding. Well, those are, seeing and understanding involve brain and sensory, but walking, yeah, that involves muscles as well. But what's happening, a lot of ischemia to the brain is causing an impairment of not only sensation, but also able to control and produce all these voluntary movements. Okay, so let's go on to another top hat question. So next question, 